Making a hair ring tutorial. Welcome to Keepsaker Supplies. I'm Nikki Kaminga and I started the Keepsaker Supplies website to provide other breastmark and memorial jewellery artists with moulds, settings and tutorials. In this video, I'll show you how to make a lock of hair ring using your client's loved one's hair or fur and one of our solid silver ring settings. In the description below, you'll find a link to the full blog on our website and all of the supplies I'm using in this video. Most of the supplies are available to buy on keepsakersupplies.com, although you can substitute with items you already own or want to buy locally. I ship internationally and I hope you all get a chance to try making this beautiful ring. You'll need the following supplies. One of our hair ring kits in your client's size. You'll find the link below to purchase one of these kits. The hair kits contain a ring setting, a single 8mm round cabochon mould, label backing paper, 25 grams of UV resin, 3 cocktail sticks, and a random sample of resin sparkle mix, vinyl gloves and some sandpaper. You might also need your client's lock of hair or fur, hairdressing scissors, a silver polishing cloth, a ring sizing mandrel, a ring clamp, a diamond file, a burnishing tool and a dust mask. I recommend you use a 48 watt LED UV lamp to save energy and make sure the pieces don't get too hot. This one has a 99 second low heat setting. Preparing the mould. As usual, inspect the mould for any dust, dirt, lines and imperfections. Don't forget to replace your moulds regularly to prevent your pieces being dull. You could make this ring without a mould, but please see our filled versus rub over cabochon setting blog before deciding. Preparing the hair. Double check your client's name and order number against what they've ordered. Inspect the hair and decide how much of it you want to use and how you want to lay it out. Carefully put a very small line of resin along a piece of label backing paper. This is to hold the hair in place and stop it blowing away. This is essential if you're working with a teeny tiny lock of hair, such as from a baby. Cut the hair a little longer than you'll need and place it on the resin. I recommend you buy a double mould and make two at once to give your client the choice, so use double the length of hair. Coat the hair in resin and use a cocktail stick to make sure it's well soaked and remove any bubbles. Cutting the hair. Cut the hair to the length needed. You need each length of resin soaked hair to be around a third longer than the width of your mould. For an 8mm mould, you could cut the hair around 11mm wide. Placing the hair in the mould. If your clients have plenty of hair, you could cut some slightly different length sections and use trial and error to find your ideal length. Each lock of hair and fur will act differently in resin. Cat fur is, in my opinion, the most difficult to work with. Use the cocktail stick to carefully nudge the hair on top of the empty mould. Push the hair down so it sits how you want and be careful not to poke your mould at this stage. Nudge out any air bubbles which will look like silvery dots or lines. Translucent moulds are vital here because you can check the placement from underneath. Curing before adding colour. You can place it under your UV lamp for 30 seconds at this stage to set the hair in place. I prefer not to because sometimes the colour can get underneath the cured hair if you do. Colour layers. Check you have the right colours, then work in thin layers to build up colour gradually until the cabochon is opaque. That means you need to make sure that you can no longer see any light through it from the back. Another good reason to use water clear moulds. Today I'm using a GN Blue Resin Sparkle Mix Blend, exclusive to Keepsaker Supplies. For a more detailed tutorial on working in layers, see my Cremation Ashes Ring video. After you've fully cured the cabochons at the end, remove from the UV lamp and leave to cool completely. Remove the cabochons from the mould, try not to touch the shiny top. Cure for a final 99 seconds and leave to cool completely again. Proof photo. I like to send my clients a proof photo of the cabochons to make sure they're happy with the colour and choose their favourite stone. 
please make sure that you make it clear to them that you will always return the unused cabochon to them free of charge. It can be heartbreaking for a client to think you'd dispose of their loved one's hair or ashes. With hair, I even try to cure and return the extra from the label backing paper. Setting. Check and prepare the cabochon. If it's still sticky, you may not have cured or cooled for long enough. If so, give it a thin coat of clear resin on top and cure and cool completely. Preparing the setting. You can use a ring sizing mandrel to check that your ring setting is the correct size. If you like, give it all a quick polish with the silver polishing cloth. Clump it in a ring mandrel if you have one. Setting the stone. Place the stone inside the bezel cup of the ring and check it sits nicely. Use the curved burnishing tool to very gently push down the silver around the edges. Work around as if it's a clock, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Don't push too hard or you could end up with ridges in the silver. Once it's all pushed down, you can start applying a little force. Make a tight seal by rubbing the silver over. That's why this is called a rub over setting. Now you have a beautiful lock of hair ring to send to your client. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell because my next series of videos will be breast milk jewellery tutorials. I'll be using Milky Mama Magic Dust from my friend Amy, the breast milk queen. I'm also going to be doing some videos with do's and don'ts for those of you who want to investigate your own breast milk preservation methods. Don't forget, I've linked to the Keepsaker Supplies blog and all the supplies you need down below if you'd like to buy the kit to make this ring yourself. Now relax and do some crafting.